really convenient. I'm not lying. There were two of them, and if I hadn't... Enough. I'm sorry to interrupt what I'm sure would have been a very well-rehearsed story, but since you can produce no witnesses of the event... Pardon me, Minister, but as it happens, we can. So it all began on a cold, snowy night in Lugano, Switzerland. It was just hours away from game day. The three of us decided to purchase train tickets to Milan on that same day. We were lucky enough to find tickets to the game. It was a Champions League final between the two biggest rivals in Italian sport, AC Milan and Inter Milan. We couldn't miss it, so at about 6 p.m., we snuck out of the dorm hall and headed to the train station to Lugano. The trip took us roughly 45 minutes, and there we were, in one of the most vibrant cities in Europe. The fans were everywhere, even at the station. So we took a cab to the stadium in complete excitement. Finally, we were there, at the magnific magnificent historical landmark, the San Siro. Everyone was either wearing red or blue. So we walked alongside the passionate fans of AC Milan, singing our club's chants. Once we got to the ticket encounter, we were startled by the fact that my friend Kareem, who had all of our tickets in his bag, forgot it at the train station. Luck wasn't on our side that day. The game was just about to start and the ticketing person aggressively push, pushed us to the side of the entrance due to the swarm of people who surrounded him. We had to make the most of it, of this miserable situation. We decided to watch the game in an open air cafe just outside the stadium. We heard every chant and scream that sent shock waves through our freezing bodies. Misery was an understatement. Luckily, the game ended with a 2-1 victory to AC Milan. We took to the streets with the joyful fans in hopes of celebrating in a local pub. However, we found ourselves lost in the maze-like alleys of central Milan. We were in the wrong side of the city. We were met by a swarm of angry Inter Milan fans who spotted our conspicuous outfits. We were all dressed in the opposite dress code. Run, shouted Yuri. And that's what we did. By the time we got to a safe haven, we were all out of breath. Luck was definitely not on our side that day. It was already 12 midnight, way past our curfew. We headed to the train station yet again in hopes of getting on a late night ride back to Lugano, but the train station was closed. Our only hope was to hitch a ride back because none of us had enough money to take a 200 euro taxi drive back. Luckily, after 45 minutes in sub-zero temperatures, we found our hitchhiker. We were back by 1.30 a.m. This is where the story ends and this one begins. So what exactly is our punishment, Headmaster Giovanni? So I'm gonna have to give you, combine them all into one and give you a day out of school. All right. 